You're wondering what's happening with Kensington, Maryland real estate these days. Well, you've come to the right place because that's what we're talking about today and we're starting right now. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Moore and I'm a full-time veteran real estate agent in the Washington DC metro area. And I post new videos every week about all things real estate in the DMV. Hi there, it's a beautiful afternoon and I'm out previewing properties. Just stopping by 4004 Brainerd Avenue to take a quick look. If you'd like to see some interior photos, click on the link below. If you're interested in what's happening in the Kensington real estate market, stick around for the September 2019 market update. One of the questions that I get all the time is, how's the market? If you're curious about what's going on with Kensington, Maryland home sales, then stick around for the next few minutes for an up to the minute snapshot of the Kensington, Maryland real estate market. So let's get going. First, we'll look at the current numbers for September and then the year to date numbers. We'll start with new listings. This year, there were 47 new listings in Kensington in September. Last year, 43, so that's an increase of 9%. Total active listings at the end of the month, this year 52, last year 58. That's a decrease of 11%. And finally, under contract properties. This year 25, last year 31. That's a decrease of 19%. If you're getting your updates from Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, or any of the other portal sites, then many of the listings you're seeing may not even be available. If you want up-to-the-minute data, then contact your agent and have them set up an update for you that's coming directly from the multiple listing service. It's the primary source that feeds all the portal sites. Why not get it straight from the horse's mouth? Here's another benefit of a direct MLS search. You can see coming soon listings. So if you want to know about listings when they're being pre-marketed on the MLS, then you need to have your agent set up that search for you. Now let's take a quick look at the year to date numbers. First, we'll start with the total number of sold properties. This year, 242. Last year, 214. That's an increase of 13%. The average sale price this year, $611,500. Last year, $602,500. That's an increase of 1.5%. And the average days on market, this year 39, last year 68. That's a decrease of 43%. If you've got a house on the market and maybe it's been on the market for longer than 39 days and you'd like to figure out how to get your house sold, then check out my video about the four things you need to do to get your house that's already on the market under contract and sold. Here's another number that I like to watch, the properties that failed to sell. In September, there were 13 properties that failed to sell. Although some of those probably came back on the market, it reminds us that even in a really strong seller's market, not every house sells. Two other numbers that I keep an eye on are the absorption rate and the list to sell ratio. Well, what's absorption rate? Let's take a minute and I'll explain that to you. Take the average number of monthly sales over the past 12 months and divide that into the total active properties at the moment. That tells you how long it'd take for all of the houses in your market to sell if nothing else came on the market. By using a 12 month average that takes the seasonal market cycles into account. If you know the number of months of inventory, that helps to determine what sort of market you're in. Zero to four months is a seller's market. Four to six months is a transitional market and six plus months is a buyer's market. The absorption rate in Kensington last month was 2.17 months worth of inventory. That's up from 1.12 months at the end of August. Part of that change is seasonal. Generally, August is a very slow month for new listings. So you just have to keep that in mind. You see that big jump in numbers and part of it is something that you see every year after Labor Day. Next is the list to sell ratio. This is how much the average home sells for as a percentage of the asking price. This is another good indicator of what sort of market you're in. A higher list to sell ratio means it's closer to a seller's market. A lower list to sell ratio points to a buyer's market. 
the average list to sell ratio last month was 97.1%. So what does all this mean? Well, inventory's moved up a bit to just over two months worth of inventory. So there's a little more for buyers to choose from. But part of that is the normal seasonal September bump. Demand has remained strong with average days on market dropping year over year. The gap in average sale price year over year from 2018 has finally flipped into the positive. So all that points to a strong seller's market and tells us that it's a good time to sell. If you know anyone who's thinking about selling, I'd appreciate the opportunity to speak with them to see if I can be of help to capitalize on this strong seller's market. This is all big picture data, which is good to have, but real estate is very local and you can see big variations in the market based on price range and specific location. If you're thinking about getting into the market, either as a buyer or a seller, and would like a detailed neighborhood specific analysis, my contact information is below. Just reach out and I'll get right back to you. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked what you saw, please tap that like button. And if you know someone, maybe a friend or neighbor who might benefit from this information, please share this video with them. Last but not least, if you wanna see more videos about real estate in the DMV, then subscribe and ring that bell and you'll be notified whenever new videos come out. Make it a great day and I'll see you again soon.